Admiral Samuel J. Paparo will relieve Admiral John C. Aquilino as Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command. This ceremony will also acknowledge Admiral Aquilino's 40-year career as he retires from the United States Navy. In recognition of his outstanding service in the Indo-Pacific region, Admiral Aquilino received the following awards from allies and partners. From Australia, Honorary Officer of the Order of Australia in the Military Division. From Japan, the Grand Cordon of the Order of the Rising Sun. From the Republic of Korea, Order of National Security Merit, Tong Il Medal. From Singapore, the Pingat Chasa Gamilan Tentera, the Meritorious Service Medal. From the Philippines, the Legion of Honor. From France, the Legion d'Honneur Award. Providing our music this morning is the Marine Corps Forces Pacific Band playing under the direction of Sergeant Gabriel Warren. Please join me in recognizing them for their outstanding pre-ceremony concert. In just a moment, the Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Q. Brown, the Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John C. Aquilino, Admiral Samuel J. Paparo, incoming Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, will arrive. To preserve the dignity of the ceremony, we ask that you, everyone, turn off all cellular phones and other wireless devices at this time. In effort to allow our guests the opportunity to view the entire ceremony, I will provide direction when appropriate to stand or remain seated. We ask that you remain seated during the presentation of awards in the reading of orders. For the military members in the audience, the ceremony is a covered event. Please render proper military honors. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, I'll ask you to stand for the arrival of the official party, the rendering of honors, the parading of national colors, the national anthem, the Hawaii state song, a traditional Hawaiian blessing, and the invocation. In accordance with naval traditions, we'll be piping aboard the official party, and it is customary to hand salute from the first note of the bosun's pipe through the ruffles and flourishes music by the band. Please be aware that with the arrival of the Secretary of Defense, there will be a 19-gun salute in close proximity, and the hand salute should be held through the last volley of the gun salute. Assembled to my left are the ceremonial side boys, selected by Admiral Aquilino because of their personal and professional relationships, whom are all former or current flag aides and aides de camp. They are Commander Gary Boswell, Commander Thomas Browning, Lieutenant Colonel Norman Renfro, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Ryan, Lieutenant Commander Colleen Daly, Lieutenant Commander Shin Pfeiffer, Lieutenant Commander Jason Spencer, and Major Christopher Veshi. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Bandmaster, sound attention. Time early, strike eight bells. Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Strike eight bells.
Indo-Pacific Command arriving. Time early. Strike eight bells. Joint Chiefs arriving. Strike eight bells. Defense arriving. Ready, two. Bosun, retire the side boys.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem sung by Master Sergeant Magsino and remain standing for the Hawaii State song, Hawaii Pono E, sung by Mr. Henry Capono. Present on! Oh, say can you Broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming
mai ko o ku ia ka hala vaila mahalo e ke akua mahalo e na kupuna la e a mahalo me ke aloha la mahalo me ke aloha la ke mahalo ni o e ke akua ola i loko o yesu kristo Ua kūkulu oe i ka hale e hana ole i a me ka lima i ka naka ma o la e ola nei. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Chaplain Crawley will now offer the invocation. I invite you to join me in prayer. Almighty God, we give thanks for the gift of Admiral Aquilino's leadership. Through his unrelenting labors, he served our country by deterring enemies and protecting our homeland and service members. By his steadfast vision, he ensured a free and open Indo-Pacific. The world took note of how he handled the mantle of his watch. We are grateful that Admiral Aquilino, like Admiral Nimitz before him, understood his great responsibility and did his utmost to meet it. Bless him and his family as they have blessed countless people upon the earth. We give thanks for your providential hands that continue to give consequential leadership for these consequential times. Thank you for preparing Admiral Paparo for this great task Grant to him strength for his burden, wisdom for his trials, friends for his journey, and success to his vision. May your blessing be upon this command and all gathered here this historic day. This I pray in your most holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats and remain seated throughout the remainder of the ceremony. Please offer a round of applause for our national anthem that was sung by Master Sergeant Magsino and Hawaii State Song by Master Henry Capone. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John C. Aquilino. Aloha. Aloha. Okay, I get very few last bits of orders that I can do. I've just changed the rules. It's now an uncovered ceremony. So for those military members, please take your covers at your comfort level. Uh, I also want to start by thanking everyone who put this together. I want to thank everyone who came to this amazing event, uh, specifically the Honorable Secretary of Defense, and the Chairman of Joint Chiefs. Everybody here watches the news like I do. Anybody hasn't noticed, it's a little busy in the world. Uh, so, Mr. Secretary and Chairman, uh, from the bottom of Pappy and my hearts, thank you for being here. Uh, I get the privilege of recognizing the incredible amount of distinguished guests and visitors here today. Pappy and I are so honored that you would come to this event and spend it with us, but I do have to recognize this way the rest of the speakers won't feel the need to go down the list and uh, do it again. Uh, I'll start by saying we're in an incredible place. The podium, we're looking at you. This is really amazing for us, and we enjoy looking at every one of your bright, shiny faces. But for you, we'd like you to see the incredible history that sits behind us. This is a place that has a place in our hearts and for those on this island continually reminds us of the sacrifices made before us. As you can see, the Arizona Memorial recognizes the place of the start of World War II. And on that ship, the 1177 sailors and marines that gave the ultimate sacrifice. 
And to your left, the Missouri, the place where the instrument of surrender was assigned or was signed and brought to the close World War II, a place that had a devastating impact to the entire globe. I didn't plan that. <laughs> but I do have to recognize the people that came today, and there are many, so bear with me. First, to the Aquilino and Paparo family. Uh, for Pappy, Maureen, Michael, Elizabeth, Joe, Abby, and John are here, and we recognize all of you uh, who have served for so long, and Maureen, get ready, you got more coming, stand by. <laughs> Uh, for me, Laura, Jess, and Lisa are here and have been with me the whole time. Uh, we're going to hold applause till the end because we'll never get through this if we clap for everybody. But thank you guys. Shireen, thank you. Uh, your friendship, uh, if you hadn't noticed, you're sitting in the family seats. Uh, that's how we view you, my friend. Thank you very much. Okay, two heads of state have showed up today and partners that since I've been here President Semina and First Lady from the Federated States of Micronesia, thank you. President Wicks from the Republic of Palau, thank you, sir, for all we've done together. Thank you very, very much. Both presidents have accompanying ministers with them. Deputy Prime Minister Marles from Australia, sir, thank you very much for participating today. Governor of Hawaii, Governor Green and Jamie, thank you for coming today. The Secretary Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Minister Kahiko from the Marshall Islands, thank you, sir, very much for being here. Uh, Senator Sullivan from Alaska is with us today, and, and Congressman Case from Hawaii, but I also know Senator Hirono, Senator Schatz, and Congressman Takuda are with us in spirit, and please pass my thanks to the governor of the delegation. Uh, I want to thank you for all you do for our service members and their families here in this amazing place of Hawaii. Uh, the governors from the territories, Governor Guerrero from Guam, it's good to see you, my friend. You are a patriot, and I am indebted to you for my entire life. Thank you for your service. The Governor, governor Palacios and his wife, uh, Wella, from the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, Islands. thank you, sir, for being here today. Secretary Del Toro. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you, sir, for all your support during my career. Numerous ambassadors from the United States, Ambassador Garcetti from India, Ambassador Emmanuel from Japan, Ambassador Kaplan from Singapore, and Director Okirk, uh, and her husband is here, as well as Assistant Secretary Critton Brink. Integrated deterrence, you are a part of it. Uh, the friendship that you have shown and the, ec the events that you have taken on have helped the United States move the ball down the field, I would have failed without you. Thank the three of you. Okay, former and current uh, Hawaiian government leaders, uh, former Governor Ige and Dawn are here. Uh, thank you, sir, for all your support during your time. Mayor Blangiardi, good to see you, my friend. Thank you very much for being here. And Hawaii House Representatives Pyrick, Martinez, and Garcia, welcome to you and thank you for coming today. Okay, you're going to see a gaggle over here of my brothers from foreign nations. And if you don't go say hi to them at some point after the ceremony, I will come and find you. But those are my battle buddies and brothers. General Campbell, General Yoshida, General Brauner, Admiral Bing, General Subianto, General Kang, Admiral Vandier, uh, Air Marshal Davies, Admiral Atterlon, uh, I always get the, the Canadian one wrong, Atterloni. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Admiral Mai, May, and General Eastman. But when we talk about partnerships across this region, once again, without that group, we'd be in a bad place. But those are my partners, battle buddies, and friends. And I thank all of you for being here today. <laughs> General Saltzman, the Chief of Space Operations, uh, of the Space Force, General Howe from Cybercom. Thank you, my other battle buddies. Uh, former CNO Jay Johnson is here. Uh, CNO, thank you, sir, for being here. There are former Indo-PACOM commanders here who have helped me get through this position. 
Specifically in the audience, Admiral Harris, Admiral Fallon, and Admiral Fargo, thank you for the council and all you've done. To the entire Consul General Corps who's seated in the audience, thank you for your support and partnership. To the community and industry leaders from Hawaii, the entire Military Affairs Council, thank all of you for being here today. And then for Admiral Paparo and my uh, follow-on list of friends and partners, thank you very much. For me, my sister and my cousins are here. Thank you guys coming all the way to Hawaii. My high school friends are here. My neighbors are here. My comrade in arms from the Ghost Riders, the Ambush, the Black Aces, the obnoxious world famous Red Rippers in their red jackets in the audience. CAG 2 team, the George Herbert Walker Bush Strike Group, my Fifth Fleet partners, my Pack Fleet team previous to this, and obviously the indo Common team is here. Uh, but there are also a couple of special recognitions that you ought to know who are in the audience. Some really good friends of Laura and me. Uh, Woody, Laura, and Mackie Harrelson, thank you for, with the busiest schedule I've ever seen, thank you for being here with us. Uh, Henry, thank you, my friend. I am incredibly honored and I have no words. Thank you. For those who don't know, Henry Capono is not just a Grammy award-winning artist, but in his days, he has been out entertaining troops for his entire career. He is a service member, a patriot, and I can't thank him enough. Uh, former Air Boss, Kenny and Melody Weitzel, and yes, his call sign is She Boy. <laughs> thank you, my brother. Okay, Breeze Coleman is here. And for those who don't know Breeze, I'll introduce you later. In 1986, he led the strike on the Elder, in El Dorado Canyon against, Syrian, or against Libyan aggression, uh, albeit in an A6, potentially the ugliest airplane in the inventory. <laughs> but it was incredibly dangerous, and he also is a patriot and a mentor of mine. And then lastly, Mr. Willie Driscoll is in the audience. And if you don't know Willie, he is the United States Navy's last ace from the Vietnam era. And he, too, has helped me manage and understand my jobs over the years. Willie, thank you for everything you've done, not just for me, but for the entire United States Navy during your time. Okay, almost done. All of the veterans and family members, where's Bob from the president of the Korean Society, Veteran Society? You out here? You better be. <laughs> thank you, my friend. To the uniformed flag officers, civilians, and civilian warriors, those of indo -PACOM, thanks. And for those unfamiliar with what this ceremony is about, the purpose of this event is to clearly transfer ultimate authority and accountability from one commander to the next in front of the force. And that's the whole purpose of today. So, now that you have been officially welcomed, and if I forgot any of you, that is my fault. You can beat me later. But thank you all for being here. It's now my official duty to introduce the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, my friend, General C.Q. Brown. He's the 21st Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. He is the nation's highest ranking military officer. He provides counsel to the Secretary and the President of the United States. Before becoming the Chairman, he was the Commander the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force. And before that, he was my partner. When I was the Pacific Fleet Commander, he was the PACAF Commander, responsible for operations in this theater. So he knows this theater. He's from San Antonio. I guess he was commissioned from the Texas Tech University. That's in here. I felt obligated to say it. <laughs> but that said, this I will say. He's got over 3,000 hours in the F-16 and over 130 combat missions. Uh, he is a warrior, he's a patriot, he is calm, he is smart, he is thoughtful, and best of all, he's my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General C.Q. Brown. Well, aloha. Aloha. It is so good to be able to say that. You, don't, you, don't, you can't say that in the Pentagon, and uh, folks will... Uh... Hey, uh, Long, thank you so much for that kind introduction. My mom would be uh, very proud of what you said about me. I appreciate, appreciate that. 
You know, entrepreneur and motivational speaker uh, Jim Rohn once said, all good men and women must take responsibility to great legacies that will take the next generation to a level we could only imagine. I'm honored to be here today to recognize two outstanding leaders whose decades of service to our nation have created legacies that will propel our military into the future and to honor their families, their unshakable commitment, and their immeasurable sacrifice. Now, before going any further, I'd like to thank everyone that is here today that made the trip to celebrate a special day in Indo PACOM's history. We have an extensive list of distinguished visitors that was outlined by Admiral Aquilino, uh, but topping that list is my boss, Secretary Austin. Secretary, it's, it's a real pleasure to be here with you to share the stage. To our government and elected officials, our civic leaders, Department of Defense leadership, General and Flag Officers, senior enlisted leaders, welcome and thank you for joining us. To our heads of state, ministers of defense, chiefs of defense, our ally and partner representatives from around the world. The close collaboration between our nations provides us all a significant strategic advantage. Thank you for being here. And most importantly, the service members and civilians of Indo-PACOM over 385,000 strong operating across half the world, who every day strengthen the defense of the U.S. and the Indo-Pacific region. Thank you for your dedication, and thanks to your families for their tremendous support. I'd like to take a moment to recognize two of those families who have faithfully served our nation for decades. Chair and I would like to thank the Aquilino family and friends that are here today. Laura. I didn't know his, his first name was John. I've never called him John or Chris. I've always called him Long. <laughs> but he's been, uh, you've been together for almost 30 years, and we are, you're a true friend. And uh, we, we hate to see you, you, you both leave. But Laura's well known here on the island and uh, throughout the uh, region for her proving lives of service members. And to their daughters, Jessica and Lisa, thank you for being here as well. I understand that Long and Laura have uh, not finalized the retirement plans. I've had a chance to talk to both of them. Uh, they're still figuring it out. But I think that demonstrates where their focus has been for the past 40 years. What they've done solely fo focused on serving our nation. And so now they'll have a little time to think about what they want to do as they uh, open the next chapter. Laura, Jessica, and Lisa uh, Long will have more family time after today. I ask that you help them. Help them with this transition ensure that he has slows down a little bit and takes some time off and take care of him like he's taken care of our nation for over four decades. Shereen and I would also like to welcome uh, the family and friends of Sam Paparo. His wife, Marina, for 35 years, a dedicated teacher and mother, and their children, Elizabeth, John, Joseph, and Michael, who are here today. Their daughter, Regina, and her uh, husband, Christopher, and their son, Samuel, and his fiancée Katie, uh, fiance Katie could not be here today. There's one thing you need to know about this family. Uh, they bleed Villanova blue. Maureen and Pappy uh, met as sophomores at Villanova. Their oldest daughter, Regina, went to Villanova. Elizabeth is at Villanova. John, a senior high school, plans to go to Villanova. Michael still has a little time, but he's probably going to Villanova too. Uh, I do hope you're getting a group discount or a building named after you. <laughs> now, for some reason, there's one apple that fell a little further from the tree. Uh, their little son, Samuel, strayed from the path. He went to the Naval Academy. <laughs> but he became a uh, Naval aviator just like his dad. To both families, thank you for your love, your support you've given these exceptional leaders uh, throughout their career. Let's give them a round of applause. When I first met Lung Aquilino over a decade ago, uh, Lung was serving on the Joint Staff and I was the uh, Deputy Director of Operations at United States Central Command. As Lung highlighted, we had the opportunity to serve here together as component commanders. Lung was at PAC Fleet and I was at PAC AF. You know, the one thing I do appreciate about Lung is that you never have to ask what he's thinking. <laughs> because before you ask, he's already told you his thoughts. 
Now, Rong is retiring as the uh, longest serving U.S. Naval Academy graduate and the longest serving Naval aviator. That makes him both the old GOAT and the Gray Eagle. But anyone who knows Long knows there's nothing old or gray about him. Since he was a kid helping his dad's uh, concrete business, driving cement trucks at the age of seven, he's taken on the hardest challenges he could find. He has over 5,000 flight hours in a Tomcat and a Hornet. He's commanded the famous Red Rippers who are here today, Carrier Air Wing 2, Carrier Strike Kick 2, and the U.S. Pacific Fleet. As U.S. Indo-PACOM Commander Long worked daily to advance Indo-PACOM's force posture and strength in relationships with our allies and partners. He pushed our joint force to think, act, and operate differently, to maintain our strategic advantage over our pacing challenge, the People's Republic of China. To Long and Laura, on behalf of the 2.1 million men and women who wear the uniform and their families, Shreen and I want to thank you for your leadership and service over 40 years. We wish you the very best in your retirement. Congratulations. And today we uh, elevate uh, Papi Paparo to the post of Indo-PACOM commander. He's well prepared for this new position. Pappy is no stranger to me or no stranger to the Joint Force. I had the honor of serving with Pappy at United States Central Command when I was a Deputy Commander and Pappy was the Director of Operations. As Commander of the United States Pacific Fleet, Pappy led the world's largest fleet command, encompassing 100 million square miles, more than half the Earth's surface. Pappy improved the fleet's information warfare capabilities and stood up Indo-PACOM's first 24-hour Joint Targeting Center, improving the Joint Force's ability to execute missions in this region. He's developed the relationships, tools, and skills to lead Indo-PACOM into the future. Pappy, Maureen, Shreen and I wish you the best throughout this command tour. We look forward to watching Indo-PACOM thrive under your leadership. Thank you, Lung. Thank you, Pappy, for your service, your sacrifice, your dedication to our nation, and most importantly, thank you for your leadership. You create great legacies that will far outlast your careers and set our military on the right path for the future. God bless you, God bless your families, and God bless the United States of America. Mahalo. At this time, Mrs. Aquilino will receive an award from General Brown. <laughs> the Distinguished Public Service Award is hereby presented to Laura Aquilino for distinguished public service to the Department of Defense through a succession of extraordinary contributions and tireless support to all personnel assigned to United States Indo-Pacific Command from April 2021 to May 2024. Mrs. Laura Aquilino generously gave of her time and talents to enhance the quality of life throughout the Indo-Pacific. Her compassion for people and faithful advocacy for policies and programs directly benefited the health welfare, education, and morale of sailors, soldiers, airmen, marines, guardians, coast guardsmen, and their families. Throughout her travels and countless visits in the United States and abroad, Mrs. Aquilino's involvement through community outreach programs helped to empower others for the benefit of the greater good. Her caring spirit and genuine concern for people influenced positive change and continuous process improvement. An inspiring ambassador, Mrs. Aquilino's friendly spirit and enduring contributions helped build trust and strengthen relationships throughout the Indo-Pacific, which fostered goodwill in the local community and among the many nations in the theater. Her contributions directly supported the command's mission to secure a free and open Indo-Pacific 
and prosperity throughout the region. The distinctive accomplishments of Mrs. Aquilino are in keeping with the finest traditions of public service and reflect great credit upon herself, United States Indo-Pacific Command, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Charles Q. Brown, Jr., General, United States Air Force, Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III. Congratulations, Laura. Well deserved. Well, aloha, everyone. Aloha. It's great to be back in Hawaii. And it's an honor to be joined today by so many distinguished guests, including Governor Green and other state and local leaders from Hawaii, members of Congress, heads of state, ministers of defense, chiefs of defense, and ambassadors and DOD leaders, and more. Let me give a special shout out to our outstanding chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General C.Q. Brown. As you heard earlier, his lovely wife, Shireen, is with us here as well. I'd also like to give a special warm welcome to the families of Chris Aquilino and Admiral Sam Paparo. Now, we're here to celebrate the exceptional men and women of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. Thanks for everything that you do to keep America safe. Let's have a round of applause for Indo-PACOM. This command's mission is at the heart of American security in the 21st century. Every day, Indo-PACOM keeps the watch in our priority of theater of operations. And together with our unmatched network of allies and partners, you're advancing our shared vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Each and every one of you. You know, we ask a lot of Indo-PACOM these days, but every day over the past three years, this command has stepped up under the extraordinary leadership of Admiral Aquilino. Chris, you've helped transform our posture, you've strengthened our readiness, and you've deepened our alliances and partnerships. And all of that has bolstered our deterrence. You know, the United States has the most combat-credible fighting force on Earth, and we're going to keep it that way. No. Now, all of this progress wasn't easy. Admiral Aquilino took command a year into the pandemic. And vaccines were just starting to become available. And on your watch, Indopaycom delivered more than 130 million life-saving COVID vaccines and other medical supplies from the Philippines to Fiji. Let me say that again. More than 130 million doses. Now, our allies and partners know that we will stand by them because that's what America does, and that's who you are. You know, a few months ago, floods displaced nearly a million people in the Philippines. And Indo-PACOM worked with USAID 
the Philippine Air Force uh, to, to rush food to another aid to local communities. And you helped our ally get back on their feet. And at home, you've worked hard to keep the faith with the people of Hawaii. After the terrible 2021 fuel spill at Red Hill, this command helped ensure that Red Hill was safely defueled and transferred to the Navy for final closure. And you've helped Maui recover from last year's devastating wildfires, surging life-saving support and long-term disaster relief. You know, Admiral Aquilino, your tenure has been a decisive time for our defense strategy in the Indo-Pacific. You've been a leading voice for major investments in critical munitions. You've pushed to advance the Replicator Initiative. You built up the, the Guam defense system to protect the most forward U.S. territory in the Indo-Pacific. And you helped get critical capabilities into the hands of the warfighter faster. And you've always understood the power of partnership. And so Indo-PACOM is working with our regional allies and partners like never before. This command has organized major exercises with our friends year after year, including Balakatan, Cobra Gold, Freedom Shield, and Garuda Shield. Now that boosts interoperability it brings together tens of thousands of troops from dozens of ally and partner countries. In fact, this year's Balakatan is underway right now. Now, we've also made historic progress with our allies and partners to strengthen our regional force posture. In Japan, we forward station the most advanced formation in the Marine Corps, the Marine Littoral Regiment. In the Philippines, we've expanded U.S. access to four new sites under our Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. In Papua New Guinea, we finalized a groundbreaking defense cooperation agreement. We're hitting new milestones in our major defense partnership with India. With Australia, we're advancing new posture initiatives across every domain. And we're deepening our historic AUKUS partnership with Australia and the UK. And so our allies and partners are working together in unprecedented ways, like the growing trilateral relationship between Japan, Republic of Korea, uh, Republic of Korea and the United States. And we've continued to strengthen our ties across the region, including with ASEAN, and the Quad and other groups of partners. Now, we still face real challenges in the region. Unfortunately, the People's Republic of China continues to engage in increasingly coercive behavior. And we can see that across the Taiwan Strait, in the East and South China Seas, among the Pacific Island countries, along the line of actual control with India, and more. You know, the PRC is the only country with both the will and increasingly the capacity to dominate the Indo-Pacific and to reshape the global order to suit its autocratic vision. And that's why the PRC remains the department's pacing challenge. Meanwhile, North Korea, Russia, and violent extremist groups still threaten security in the region. But Indo-PACOM has risen to meet the moment together with allies and partners. And it has moved us closer to our shared vision of an Indo-Pacific that is free and open and secure. Again and again. And again, now ladies and gentlemen, this 
doesn't just happen. It takes vision, dedication, it takes teamwork, and it takes leadership. As everyone knows, as everyone has seen, those virtues have defined Admiral Aquilino over his 40 years in uniform from ensign to admiral. Now Chris didn't serve alone, so it's great to be here with his wife Laura, their daughters Jessica and Lisa. Thanks for all the sacrifices that you've made. And thanks for standing by the Admiral throughout his outstanding career. Now, Laura and Chris raised two great children. Lisa is in Southern California now, working as a film editor. And Jessica lives right here in Hawaii and works as an ICU nurse. And Laura, you are the heart of this outstanding family. So thanks for being a fantastic advocate for our military families, and for supporting educational initiatives for military-connected kids, and being a great goodwill ambassador across the region. So tremendous thanks for everything that you and your family have done in support of the Admiral. Once again, thank you so much. Now, Chris, you distinguish yourself as a naval aviator and a fierce warfighter. After graduating from Top Gun, you trained some of America's most promising fighter pilots. Speaking of Top Gun, I'm sorry that John Hamm beat you out of the role of hard, the, the hard-bitten ad, admiral in uh, Top Gun Maverick. But I know you wanted the part, but uh, sorry that uh, you didn't get that part. <laughs> But seriously, we've always counted on Chris in the cockpit. Chris, you've flown consequential and dangerous missions in Iraq and Afghanistan. And you've excelled in every, at every echelon uh, in command from squadron to combatant command. And now, you know, as I thought about this as a young man, Chris inexplicably chose the Naval Academy over West Point. I knew somebody would say beat Army. Hey, I'm the Secretary. I want everybody to win, okay? You know, when Chris was getting ready to graduate, his fellow midshipmen in the class of 1984, wrote in their yearbook, and I quote, we know that Chris will always fly high. And then they added, he'd always score low. <laughs> now they were referring to Chris's skill at the card game parts, and not his grades. And so we hope, we all hope that you and Laura will finally have more time to play hearts in the years to come, Chris. And Admiral, the class of 1984 was right. You have always flown high and taken forces that you've led to incredible heights. Now, you've also earned plenty of awards during your illustrious career, but I wanted to make sure that everyone understood what the chairman said earlier about you being the old goat. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, that means you're in the Army. <laughs> but the old goat is the longest serving Naval Academy graduate on active duty. So Chris, bravo Zulu, my friend. Thanks for an incredible journey. Thanks for 40 years of distinguished service in the United States Navy. Charlene and I and everyone here wish you and Laura 
fair winds, and following seas. And again, ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for Admiral Ackerman. And so today, the colors pass from Admiral Aquilino to Admiral Paparo. Now, Chris is a tough act to follow, but Admiral Paparo is exactly the right leader for this moment and this mission. Sam, let me welcome your wife, Maureen, your children, Elizabeth, John, Joseph, and Michael. And I know that your daughter, Regina, and her husband, Christopher, and your son, Sam, and his fiancée, Katie, all wish that they could be here today. As you can see, the Paparo children are all doing well. I'd like to congratulate Lieutenant J.G. Sam Paparo for carrying on his dad's legacy as a naval aviator. Now, over the Admiral's career, the Paparo family has lived at 15 different duty stations. And each of the kids has attended at least five different schools. And through each move, Maureen has been the rock of this exemplary military family. She's worked as a teacher and served on the Armed Services YMCA board here in Hawaii. Maureen, thanks for your education to our military families and for supporting after-school activities for kids of service members and for making sure that everyone has food on their table, and for helping service members visit loved ones over the holidays, and more. So let's give it up for Maureen and Paparo family. <laughs> Sam, you've been a leader throughout your 37 years in uniform. And like Chris, you also graduated from Top Gun. You've also flown critical missions around the world. And you work closely with your sister services, flying F-15s with the Air Force, and serving with the Army in Afghanistan, commanding a, pr a provincial reconstruction team. And you have deep experience in this theater, including as commander of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. It's all been leading up to this, the challenge of leading United States indo -Pacon. And Sam, we all know that you will excel. And we know that you will lead with principle and pride. And we know that you will keep America safe. And so, Admiral, thanks for a lifetime of service and for all that you will give to this great command. And let's hear it again for Admiral Paparo uh, and his friends. Now, I know that I'm standing between you and the grill on Aloha Friday. But I wanted to conclude by taking just a moment to honor the life of Lou Hunter, who died last month at the age of 102. As many of you know, he was the last known survivor of the USS Arizona, which rests just behind me. On October 7, 1941, he was a quartermaster. And miraculously, he wasn't hurt in the attack on Pearl Harbor. And he raced to help the wounded, put out fires, and recover his fallen teammates. And he went on, he went on to become a decorated naval aviator, flying missions in World War II and Korea. And he retired as a lieutenant colonel. 
You know, when people, whenever people asked about Pearl Harbor, he would always say, I'm not a hero. I was just doing my job. But he did more than his job. He did his duty. And his life was a beacon that should still guide us forward. His humility and his commitment to defending our country are hallmarks of the greatest generation. Their courage and patriotism defeated fascism and helped establish the peace and prosperity that has made every American so much more secure since the end of World War II. That's the legacy, the mighty legacy, of Lou Conter. And every day, serv American service members like you can carry that legacy forward. May we always live up to his example. So thanks again to the men and women of U.S. Indo-PACOM. Thanks for defending our country. Thanks for upholding our values. Thanks for raising your hand to serve. I am proud to be your teammate. And so may God bless you and your families, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John C. Aquilino. <clears throat> Okay, thank you again. First of all, before I start, I want all of you to think that if you're over 40, think about what it would take to build a speech to a thousand of your closest friends for the last 40 years of what you've done. And now bear with me for a few minutes. I timed this last night. It was two hours and 22 minutes. I worked diligently till 5 a.m. It's now down to one hour and 59 minutes. Uh, all kidding aside, thank you, friends, family, distinguished guests. Mr. Secretary, uh, thank you for those incredibly kind words. Uh, I am humbled. Uh, Chairman, thanks for honoring Laura. Let me just start by saying, uh, first of all, to Laura, Jessica, and Lisa, that you are truly selfless servants. I'm incredibly proud of you both, or all three of you. Sorry told you, bear with me, all right? I got the IQ of a house plant right now. For all in the crowd, you know, 40 years ago, I raised my right hand and swore an oath. And that group of people never raised their right hand and swore anything. But they have provided at least as much, if not more, sacrifice than I have over 40 years. I spent more time with my fighting brothers and sisters in arms than I have with them over the past 40 years. And all I'll say is this, uh, thanks, I can never repay you, I'll only say thank you. To Maureen and the kids, same. You also didn't raise your hand. Uh, but the sacrifices that the Secretary outlined, uh, for you, those will continue. So I will thank you in advance. And it doesn't get easier, it gets harder. Thank you to the Paparo, Paparo family. And to lastly, to all the service members' family, it is recognized by me. That's the reason I have Fleet Isom up here. Uh, he is the beacon and the guy and looking out with, with me for all the service members and their families each and every day. We are aware of your sacrifices, and thank you is not enough, but thank you. Okay, Secretary and Chairman, uh, thanks for the rope. Thanks for not hanging me with it. Chairman, thanks for the friendship. To the Chads, thank you. I said it before, uh, everything we got done in the Indo-Pacific was done as partners and teammates. Thanks for your counsel, thanks for your mentorship, thanks for what you've done. And uh, we're still on each other's speed dials, and uh, that will never stop. I'm honored. Last night, 
uh, or last week, I said my goodbyes to the sub unified combatant command or component commanders, to the component commanders, uh, to my subordinate commanders, to my staff, and to my personal staff. I'm not going to do that here today. But I will highlight a couple of themes of what I told them. Number one, that they're the best of the best in the most crucial theater, against the most challenging threat. They understand the theater, they understand the people, they understand the cultures, and they are the right people at the right time. Pappy, they will serve you well. I asked them to think, act, and operate differently in the most dangerous time that I've seen in 40 years of doing this business. And they have delivered the integrated deterrence that the Secretary has tasked us. And they have exceeded every expectation. You heard some of this before. They have advanced the theater posture. They've strengthened allies and partnerships. They've integrated all domain ops into a, ho a coherent campaign plan that proved to any adversary that the United States is not the force to take on. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. And I leave behind the most integrated, lethal joint force on this planet, and they are ready. Every success that you heard about today is theirs. Okay, 40 years. I can't tell you the number of people who have asked me the same questions. What would you have done different? What won't you ever forget? What advice might you give? to those behind you. And then I thought and realized nobody really cares what I think. <laughs> Although maybe that's just in my house. <laughs> but I will try to answer a few of those questions today because I really did ponder them. I didn't think about them until people started asking. But there's a couple of things that I think wrap up uh, some incredibly important things and at least what I'd, how I would answer a fast. So things that I wish were different. First, that my mom, dad, my aunt and uncle could be here today and watch this. Second, that I could have been around much more for you two. This business took me away a lot. I wish I could have been around more. Law, you did an amazing job, thanks. I wish we didn't lose so many friends and partners. I'm just going to name a few because it continued to come back and hit me. We lost Terrence. We lost Guy. We lost Vince Capoy. We lost Roldan Graham. We lost Kojak. We lost Basher. We lost Wally, Stacy. Lex, Zap, and Dick, way too early. And that's a burden that I'll carry forever. I won't forget the people that helped me get here. And before I start naming some names, you need to know that each and every one of you who I've grown up with and lived with are a part of me and a part of what I become. But there are some people that I have to mention. Shortney, Keating, Willard, Johnson, Pilling, Harvey, Fallon, Harris, Locklear, Richardson, Davidson, Odierno, Votel, Petraeus, Moran, Fargo, Mackey, Zlatiper, Honea, and Isom. So those are the people. And I know you recognize many of those names. But there's things I've experienced that I also won't ever forget. The feeling inside 
on a combat mission when it came over the radio that there were troops in contact who needed air power. Watching all the soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, coast guardsmen, guardians, and civilian warriors working every day to defend this nation. Returning from a 12-hour combat mission, landing on that ship in the middle of the night with a full moon right in front of me. And all the times I've spent with all of you. Last, the faces of my girls when, the air, when we flew in and returned from a long deployment. <clears throat> okay, advice. Also something I know no one ever cared or listened to me. But there are some things that I've taken to heart and I think it's worth passing on. Okay, for what I leave behind, we get paid to, to think of and be prepared for the worst thing that could ever happen. So, for you, it could happen on your watch. Be ready. Train and trust your team. They will move heaven and earth to get it done. Always do the right thing for the right reason. And in the end, there's only one person you got to please and you got to look in the mirror and prove that you did it right. For those commanding troops, never stop asking yourself this question. What have I trained them to do? Because at some point, you're going to might have to send them in harm's way. Leave it all on the field. And then the Mikpon, for our three tours together, said it in three concise phrases on how to think about this business. And for those in the Navy, we talk about it in this manner. Ship, shipmate, self. Ms. Secretary, I'm thankful that you, the President of Congress, have entrusted me to this amazing position. And when I assumed command three years ago, I told you I'd give you my full and unwavering commitment to take on this great responsibility and do it to my best to meet it. I hope you believe I've met that mark. And I will sleep soundly. Matter of fact, it'll be the first time I've slept in three years, but I'll sleep soundly. Knowing that Pappy is in the, at the controls, that the great leaders are here and in his stead, and that the war fighters of this theater will continue the mission. I'll now read my orders. CNO Order 0604, your request to be transferred to the retired list has been approved by the Secretary of Defense. Detach in May 2024 from duty as commander, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. Relieved of all active duty, effective 30 June 2024. Fleet, all out my flag. Yes, I'm ready to be relieved. I will now read my orders. CNO Order 0665. When directed, report to Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, as is relief.
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing and congratulating the 27th Commander of United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Samuel J. Paparo. Fleet Master Chief, break my flag. Yes, sir. Aloha. Aloha. Good morning. I'm, uh, I'm deeply honored to be with each and every one of you here today, and I, along with our family, led by Maureen Connolly Paparo, we stand ready to serve alongside and lead the Joint Force in the Indo-Pacific. Mr. Secretary, thank you for your trust and confidence in me. We understand the mission you have given the command, and we will meet it. SECNAV, I want to take a moment to thank you for your decisive leadership, especially here in Hawaii especially during the early days of the Red Hill Crisis, where you led quickly, you sped to the scene, led decisively, and acted compassionately. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you for your friendship. <laughs> Chairman, thank you for being here. Uh, I think you know how much your presence means to us, means to me. We served together before. I've relished the mentorship and the friendship, and that same gratitude extends to my teammates, uh, my uh, fellow, my component commanders, and the sub-unified commanders. Thanks to you all. Our strength isn't just the sum of the uh, U.S. Joint Force, but also the entire force operating across all domains and with all of our allies and partners, no matter where they are, leaders of Hawaii. Thank you for the partnership and our deep commitment to our combined mission to protect our nation and the great state and the wonderful people of Hawaii. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, thank you for your commitment to engagement and dialogue. These are the first and most critical tenets of peace, security, and stability. To the Chiefs of Defense, thanks for your welcome remarks in our recent virtual CHOD meeting. Thanks for welcoming me to the team. And I look forward to our continued friendship and our partnership. And to the heads of state that graced us with, our pre with your presence. To the ministers of defense from our allied and our partner nations. Thank you for being here today to mark this solemn ceremony. And thanks for the relationships we built together. Uh, you being here, it really truly represents the shared strategic advantage rooted in values. Our partnership with each other, it makes us stronger. It makes us more capable. And these relationships will help preserve peace in the Indo-Pacific. For long, I learned today that his first name is John. Uh, I've known him for 35 years, and uh, uh, you know, I heard Chris and John, and I don't think I've ever heard him called those things. Long, uh, there's not a, there's, there's no remark, there's no uh, thank you that's adequate to capture all you've done for the Navy, for the Joint Force, and for the nation over these last 40 years. You've been my mentor for all of those years and uh, also my boss for most of them. Uh, you shaped the team that follows behind you. I had a joke with Long the other day is that I would like to thank all my friends, but actually they're all here for Long. <laughs> Long, uh, we're smarter, we're tougher, and we're stronger warfighters for your leadership. Uh, you imparted uh, those lessons to us just a moment ago, that understanding, to understand the mission, to be able to see risk that others don't, to be decisive, these were key attributes that I tried to emulate uh, in my own career. I'm grateful for your mentorship 
And Laura, you've been such a wonderful friend to our family, to Maureen. And as you embark on your next phase, know that we're deeply thankful to have known your decency and your strength. And uh, the Aquilinos forever will be family to the Paparos. Thank you. As we look to the future, the joint force will meet this great responsibility with strength, resolve, and confidence. Indo-PACOM, together with our partners, is positioned to deny and defend against attempts to break the peace accorded by the international rules-based order. With this enduring task, the United States and our allies and our partners will uphold the stable and open international system that's been a pillar of global security and well-being for nearly a century. We'll confidently action all challenges that threaten the goals required to achieve mission success. Our world faces a complex problem set in the troubling actions of the People's Republic of China and its rapid buildup of forces. We must be ready to answer the PRC's increasingly intrusive and expansionist claims in the Indo-Pacific region. Some call it the gray zone. My friend uh, General Brauner from the Republic of the Philippines has a phrase called ICAD, and he has renamed gray zone, which sounds otherwise benign and dull, into ICAD, which is illegal, coercive, aggressive, and deceptive. This demonstrates the wisdom of our allies and partners. Russia, North Korea, and violent extremist organizations also threaten peace, stability, and order. We will work in concert with allies and partners and our joint teammates to preserve the free and open Indo-Pacific, itself a phrase coined by the late Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. We will safeguard the international order characterized by transparency, cooperation, fair competition, and the rule of law. We'll bring all to bear in all domains, harnessing and integrating capabilities, supporting partnerships to maintain peace and security while safeguarding sovereign rights. Finally, we'll strive for the peaceful resolution of any crisis or conflict, but make no mistake, as Lung said, we will be ready to fight any adversary that threatens the peace, security, stability, and well-being of the nation and of our allies and partners. The team is uniquely ready to shape the current strategic environment to our nation and our allies and partners' advantage, and we must act now with a sense of urgency. We set out on this path with the effort to regain the advantage under Admiral Davidson. We built on that progress together in which we seized the initiative under Lung Aquilino and now onward to prevail. May God bless America and let's get to work. My thanks. Flag detail, post. At this point, we are transitioning to the retirement portion of the ceremony. The reading of Old Glory will be delivered by Lieutenant Colonel David Rodriguez, and the detail that the assembly is preparing to present our nation's flag to Admiral Aquilino. These service members are close personal friends and shipmates with Admiral Aquilino and displays his progression through the ranks. They are Lieutenant General Skolenko, Rear Admiral Upper Half Martin, Rear Admiral Lower Half Henderset, Captain Flat, Commander Borrego, 
Lieutenant Commander Walker, Lieutenant Weitzel, Lieutenant Junior Grade Manak, and Ensign Moore. I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher. My colors a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshipped. I am saluted. I am respected. I am revered. I am loved. And I am feared. I have fought in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, Guam, Okinawa, Tarawa, Korea, Vietnam, the Persian Gulf, and a score of places long forgotten by all, except by those who were there with me. I was there. I led my sailors and marines. I followed them. I watched over them. They loved me. I was on a small hill on Iwo Jima. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired. But my sailors and marines cheered me, and I was proud. I was at Ground Zero in New York City on September 11th as cowardly fanatics attacked America. I was raised from the ashes of once proud buildings by brave firefighters, heroes who risked their lives to save others showing all that America, although bloodied, will never be beaten. Those who would destroy me cannot win, for I am the symbol of freedom, of one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is by those whom I have served with in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the surly bonds of earth, and from my vantage point on the moon, I stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space. I have been a silent witness to all of America's finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I am torn in strips to be used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle. 
when I fly half-mast to honor my sailors and marines, and when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at the gravesite of her fallen son or daughter, I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave, dear God, long may I wave. Piping ashore is a historical and traditional naval ceremony that began in the 1700s. With the ship's bosun's mate manning the bosun pipe to control the actions of the sailors, hoisting manning the lines of visiting officers that were brought aboard in a basket from a small boat. Side boys were assigned to assist in hoisting and to swing the basket aboard. The more senior officers were generally stouter and normally required more side boys. <laughs> These days, the piping ashore is reserved for both officers and enlisted men and women who have completed a career serving their country in the highest traditions of the naval service. There are no baskets involved in today's updated piping ashore ceremony. Now, the retiree passes by the side boys who salute as the bosun's mate pipes him ashore. Traditionally, the retiree requests permission to go ashore for the last time, symbolizing the end of a naval career. Bosun, post the side boys. The watch will be recited by Senior Chief Yamzan, Ensign Manak, and Sergeant First Class Nystrom. For 40 years, this humble leader, Admiral Aquilino, has stood the watch. While some of us are in a bunk star night, this fearless aviator stood the watch. While some of us are in school, learning our trades, this devoted father stood to watch. Yes, even before some of us were born into this world, this role model stood to watch. In those years, when the storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizon of history, this hero stood to watch. Many times he would cast an eye ashore and see his family standing there, needing his guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times, but he still stood the watch. He stood the watch for 40 years. He stood the watch so that we, our families, and our fellow countrymen and women could sleep soundly in safety each and every night knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today we are here and say, shipmate, the watch stands relieved. Relieved by those you've trained, guided, and led. I rely on you stand relieved. We have the watch. Please rise for the benediction. I invite you to prayer. Almighty God, 
By your awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, you are the hopes of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength, you establish the mountains, being girded with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, the tumult of the peoples. To you we give thanks. And now, O oh God, bless us with the resolve to serve our great nation and the peoples of the earth. Bless Admiral Aquilino as he embarks upon new seas of service. Bless Admiral Paparo as he stewards this sacred trust. Bless us with peace in our hearts as we pursue peace across the globe. Bless all gathered here today, both now and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Boatswain, stand by to pipe the side. Shipmate is going ashore. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Henry Capono as he performs Coming Home in honor of the Aquilino family. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, so honored to be here today. Um, I know the Admiral as uh, Chris in uh, shorts and t-shirt. And I've never seen him so dressed up and looking so good. And I didn't realize how uh, what an important person he is. He only asked me to come here and sit and watch, and uh, I offered to play something, and he said, no, just come and watch, and, but I, uh, I feel honored to be here for you and, uh, and your family, and for all our brave uh, soldiers, who, uh, warriors who um, make it possible for us to be here and safe. A song called, I'm Coming Home. I'm coming home, waiting for my plane, waiting for this day. Tonight, we'll both be all alone. I'll hold you in my arms and never let you go. I'm coming home. Kept the rose you sent with me I looked at it every day It got me through it all and you were always on my mind I hope and pray that time Will bring us back again I'm coming home It's been a long, long time I kept my hopes up high I knew when we first met you would be my wife, the mother of our child. Today is not just any day, 
It's forevermore This I promise you I'm coming home the Aquilino family to join Admiral Aquilino on the stage. Please rise for the departure of the official party. In keeping with the time-honored naval tradition, Admiral Aquilino will now request permission from the Secretary of Defense to go ashore for the final time. Time orderly, strike eight bells. Admiral John C. Aquilino and Mrs. Laura Aquilino, United States Navy, retired, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Admiral Aquilino and Admiral Paparo, I extend their sincere appreciation for your attendance. Prior to the start of the reception, the official party will move into position for receiving lines. We ask that you wait to form the receiving lines until directed by protocol personnel. A short reception will start immediately following the cake cutting in the area to my right for invited guests. Ushers will be in place to assist you to the proper areas. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank <laughs> you.